today in this video we're going to see how the 12th generation laptops are going to perform the older lake laptops yes i'm going to lower this to laptop wattage this is the 12900k and we're going to compare the scores to the m1 max that's max m1 max cpus or m1 pro it doesn't matter to see what the score differences will be and i'm going to compare it to the imac because i'm sort of a little bit sad that the next iMac is going to be this thin and light thing like the 24 inch iMac and it's probably going to use the M1 Pro and M1 Max that are in the MacBook Pro 16 and 14 and I've got to say with AMD's latest graphics and this older Lake CPU I'll show you how fast it would be in the current iMac if they just put it in the current 27 inch iMac and put a mini LED on the current 27 inch iMac how much of a beast it would actually be so first off I just want to show you what a beast this thing is. Okay, eight performance cores, eight efficiency cores. Now, with the older Lake laptops, most of them are probably going to come with six performance cores. But for muscle books, there will be, say, a 12950 and a 12980 HK. These are supposed to have eight performance cores, eight efficiency cores, exactly like the CPU you're looking at right now, or you're looking at the telemetry from this CPU at least. So let's lower the wattage to what a normal laptop would do. Remember, the laptop parts will have better performance per watt, but I'm going to actually leave it. It is hot as ball sack in here. Like, it is really hot at the moment. So you're probably hearing fans in the background. I can't do anything about that. But I just want to show you quickly just how much power this can actually use this 12th generation CPU. And I'm actually going to review some motherboards for the 12th generation Intel platform. I've had ASUS, I've had a Gigabyte, I've had DDR4, I've had DDR5. And what I can tell you right now is at the moment stick with RAM that works. And the RAM I recommend is Crucial RAM. It's the only ones that worked at their advertised speed. I've got loads of RAM. I've got this DDR5 kit from Crucial. I've got crucial ddr4 all worked at advertised speeds a lot of people are getting rammed if they're trying to enable xmp and it just won't work so i'd stick with what works and i wouldn't get any fancy pants ram until this platform is well down the track you know a few bias revisions etc stick with what works i'll leave a link to the crucial ram i use for laptops and actually desktops that i know works 100 percent but anyway let's see how much power this thing can use so i'm going to put this to 5.4 watch this thermal throttle straight away we're going to put the performance cores the efficiency cores up to 4 gigahertz so this is 5.4 on the performance cores 4 gigahertz on the efficiency cores and we're going to we'll max this out here and we're going to pump as many watts into this as we can it's just going to melt anyway i would usually do an undervolt but i don't want this to crash while i'm recording here so just watch on the bottom right hand corner watch this thing how much power it uses and by the way i'm using azusa's entry level motherboard so this is their cheapest one literally and you'll see all these clowns that say don't buy these because they got a weak vrm in this watch this i gave it 45 millivolts extra so let's see what happens here and bottom right hand corner you want to look and watch it Woof! thermal throttle straight away 280 watts wow 275 watts it was using over 300 watts before but it gets just too hot now it just reaches that 5 gigahertz and gets too hot because it's really hot in here and this is like a 360 rad on it okay and yeah i could get over 300 watts the cpu is going to buckle before the vrms uh, that's what you need to know anyway let's just get rid of this now, first of all, the 11th gen CPUs have the fastest single core already, all right, out of laptops, even faster than the M1. The M1 does about 12,400 in Cinebench. That's multi-core. But have a look at this single core. This is at 5.4 gigahertz. Yes, I'm not joking. That is 2,079. That's like 400 more than any sort of single core score on anything, okay? The single core on this is just out of this world. That's running at 5.4 course on a laptop we won't be able to do that before i lower it to laptop wattage i'm going to lower it to imac wattage so 27 inch imac does 140 watts that's about the maximum the cpu does i think it's the 10 9 20 or 10 9 10 or whatever it is whatever i9 they had it done about 140 watts we'll apply that so let's run cinebench and a 27 inch imac will do about 14,500 in cinebench multi-core Let's see what happens here. You want to look down the bottom right hand corner. We're power limit throttling here. See, we're using 140 watts, which the 27 inch iMac will do 140 watts. That equals about 3 gigahertz. And you can see here it's cruising at 61 degrees. This would fit in a 27 inch iMac, no problem. Of course, if they're going to make the next iMac thin and light, it wouldn't fit in this. Well, you need the M1 Pro or Max. 
So yeah, it has to fit in the current chassis. I just wish they would put a mini LED on that and have one of these and maybe the next generation go to the M1s because imagine you had the AMD graphics as well. It would be an awesome gaming machine. But anyway, we're talking 14,500. That's what the current uh, iMac gets. Let's see what happens here. And it's just cruising here, 140 watts, 60 degrees, 16,216. So there you go, a big lift there. This would be awesome. And of course, we're going to get the faster single core as well. Even faster than the M1 Pro and M1 Max, which is probably going to go in the next 27 inch. And yeah, there may be an iMac Pro, which maybe uses two M1 Maxes, but we'll have to wait and see there. Now let's lower it to laptop wattage. All right, so now I'm trying to simulate a laptop, okay? So a Legion 7 or a good laptop, Alienware M17 or, you know, GE76 Raider can do over 100 watts, no problem. We're going to do here, what we're we going to do, 120 watts, which is very achievable on a good gaming laptop, minus 100 millivolts because better performance per watt on mobile chips you get. So let's just see here what we get. I'm trying to simulate it as accurately as I can from what we know. Let's just run this benchmark now. And the score we're looking for is about 15,000 on the current top of the line 12th gen laptops, or sorry, 11th gen laptops. So 11950H, 11980HK, or even 11800H, if it's unlocked and maybe you can undervolt it a bit, can do about 15,000 in Cinebench multi core. So it would be very interesting here. This is power limited to 120 watts. I've done that minus 100 millivolts to simulate, you know, the mobile part just having better performance per watt because they will use less voltage than the, than the desktop. So, you know, I'm trying to do it as accurately as I can. Will this carry over and scale over? We hope so. Let's just see what the score is here. We want to beat 15,000, 17,000. Wow. Well, if it's actually that good. I think we'll be amazed. I'm probably more likely to think maybe it will probably be in the 16,000s, maybe the minus 100, or maybe I need to lower the wattage a bit. But let's simulate, say, for example, uh, an XPS 15 or some sort of thin and light laptop where it'll peak at about 90 and then go down to about 60. All right, so we're using up to 75 watts. And we're using all the cores now. So this is good. This is what we wanted. I've gave it that extra bit of juice and it's using 16 cores. Yeah, before it was flipping in between 16 and 8. Yeah, so this should be more accurate of what we're going to get. Um, there's no undervolt here. So we're doing 2.8 gigahertz and we're using all the cores. So the score we're looking for is about 12,000. That's about an XPS would do. You know, it would do 90 watts for most of Cinebench run, and then it would drop down to about 58 watts, something like that. And any thin and light sort of laptop 15 inch would do that sort of thing as well. Even the X1 Extreme will go down to even, uh, I think that goes down to like 55 watts at the moment under the current firmware. So now we're doing 75, and what it's, what's the score? There we go, 15,000 roughly in the ballpark 12,000 is what we'd expect with that sort of wattage in the you know the 11th generation going up to 15,000 I think that's a bit too much but I think that is definitely in the ballpark so expect around you know 16,000 for the you know the high performance laptops maybe a bit more and yeah you probably get a 14 15,000 up from 12,000 in the thin and lights with the same sort of wattage of what the laptops use now. So this is pretty much, it's within the range I sort of expect there. So it's definitely gonna be faster in single core and multi-core than the M1 Max and Pros. Um, it will use a hell of a lot more power, of course. They're not more power efficient, but um, yeah, interesting. Catch you in the next one, guys. Tally, ho.